Hello everyone. Welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. In today's session, we'll learn about anthropological survey of India. Yes, friends. Do not forget to attend UPSC CSC Prelims 2021 Carnival organized by An Academy. Yes, we are conducting this carnival today from. 8 am to 11 pm where 100 plus top educators will guide you for the preparation there are 400 plus classes 5000 plus mcqs and pyqs discussions yes 1 lakh plus aspirants attending this session carnival live and 20 plus marathon sessions and crash courses so Attend this carnival and boost up your preparation. Yes, friends. And we have special classes as well. Today you can attend my special classes on an academy app. So enroll for these special classes. So in today's session, we'll continue with new topic that is anthropological survey of India. We'll see why this organization was in news recently and other relevant information related in the context of our examination requirement yes friends it's my pleasure to welcome you all on an academy india's largest learning platform where you will get daily life classes unlimited access for live and recorded lectures along with structured courses and live tests so you can evaluate yourself throughout the preparation we hundred plus top educators will guide you throughout the journey yes it's me Rishikesh Inamdar guiding UPSC aspirants from last eight years you can follow me on an academy and also you can join our telegram group using this link for daily updates yes on our platform we have 15,000 plus courses for UPSC CSC in which we have like polity governance and IR geography science and technology history environment and ecology Art and culture. Yes, along with that, we have Indian economy, current affairs, and optional courses as well. So hurry up and start your preparation as per your choice. Yes, those aspirants are looking for paid subscriptions, like we have plus and iconic subscription options for them, where you will get. 10% discount using referral code RBI life yes friends these are the features of our courses so it's my suggestion to the aspirants those who are planning to start their preparation after their 12th examination or those aspirants are pursuing graduation they can opt our iconic subscription where we will assist you throughout the phase of your preparation for UPSC CSC. Yes, if we are talking about optional subject, we have optional subject subscription as well for one year, two year and three year where you will get 10% discount using referral code RBI Life. Yes, we have combo subscription as well to get 10% discount you can use a referral code RBI life and in this combo subscription you will get one year two year and three years option to opt this subscription yes now here is the announcement of our free test series those aspirants are planning to appear for or appearing for upcoming prelims they can start 
their evaluation through our free test series. So use referral code RBI Live to unlock this free test series on our platform where we will cover complete general studies and current affairs. Yes, these are new batches like one year, two year and NCIT batches for UPSC, CSE. Yes, and do not forget to enroll yourself for Unacademy Combat which is scheduled on tomorrow in the morning 11 o'clock. Yes friends, you can use referral code RBI Life to unlock the combat. Yes. So we'll start today's session. Yes, friends. So in today's lecture, we'll learn about Anthropological Survey of India. Yes, I hope everyone is aware about Anthropology. Yes, this is the connect with the Anthropological Survey of India. If we are talking about subject Anthropology, one of the favorite optional subject of UPSC CAC aspirants. Yes, friends. So, friends, well. learn about anthropological survey of India so before that why this organization was in news recently because it has stated that any exploitation of the North Sentinel Island of the Andamans for commercial and strategic gain would wipe out the tribals Yes, so the Anthropological Survey of India has stated that any exploitation of the North Sentinel Island of the Andamans for commercial and strategic gain would wipe out the tribals. Yes, see those pictures. of this location that is North Sentinental Island and the tribe residing there. So in context with this news, first of all, we'll study what is the archaeological survey of India? Yes. What is the archaeological survey of India? Correction. Yes, the similar terminology like archaeological and anthropological. But in today's lecture, we'll see anthropological. Yes, anthropological survey of India. Yes. So, this is the only research organization to pursue anthropological research in a governmental setup. Yes. ANSI, Anthropological Survey of India, is the apex Indian government organization involved in anthropological studies field data research for human and cultural aspects, working primarily in the fields of physical anthropology and cultural anthropology. Yes, so ANSI, Anthropological Survey of India, is the apex Indian government organization involved in anthropological studies 
and field data research for human and cultural aspects, working primarily in the fields of physical anthropology and cultural anthropology. Yes, the Anthropological Survey of India's genesis was from the Zoological and Anthropological section of the Indian Museum, which became the Zoological Survey of India in 1916. Yes. So in 1945, anthropology section of the Zoological Survey was carved out to become the Anthropological Survey of India, ANSI, with Dr. B. S. Guha as the founding director in 1946. Yes, so in 1945, the Anthropological Survey of India was carved out from the Zoological Survey. Yes, so the head office of the Anthropological Survey of India was shifted from Banaras to Calcutta in 1948. Yes, so currently the head office of the Anthropological Survey of India is in Calcutta. Yes, so much prior to the establishment of the Anthropological Survey of India, almost since the beginning of the last century, where the unparalleled diversity of the people of this ancient land has come to the notice for a study of every cognizanti interested in the Indian people, their culture, social institutions and above all their ethnic affinities. Yes, so after that efforts were made to understand the people in a scientific way not only for the furtherance of scientific knowledge but also its application towards country's needs and for its national well-being. Yes, as we know, ultimately inclusive growth of any nation or any country which will include all the verticals, all the groups of that country should participate in the process of development. Yes. Now, efforts were made to understand the people of people in a scientific way. Yes, and its application towards the nation's needs and for its national well-being. Yes, then the Anthropological Survey of India rose to every occasion to contribute its might though its mandate of pursuing research in social culture and biological aspects of the people of India in a holistic perspective with the emphasis on the matters of contemporary relevance and national significance. Yes friends, so after independence the need to bring in harmony among the people separated by clashing interest of ethnic, cultural and religious affiliations and to devise ways and means for the ab-original and disadvantaged social groups to suitably adjust to the changing conditions in and outside the country. Yes, so without geopardizing their ways of life was a challenging task for India. Yes. So, in this and many other tasks, Anthropological Survey of India proved its metal to the appreciation of all. And the Anthropological Survey of India's contribution 
for understanding the people of India by its coverage of the entire length and breadth of the country and its human surface, its publications and ethnographic films have been widely used and acknowledged all over the world. Yes. The Anthropological Survey of India kept itself abreast of the new challenges facing humanity and tuned itself to reap the benefits of the emerging technologies all over for the benefit of humankind. Yes. So this is the introductory information of Anthropological Survey of India. Yes, friends. This is the Apex Indian government organization involved in anthropological studies and field data research of human and cultural aspects working primarily in the fields of physical anthropology and cultural anthropology. Yes. In 1945, the Anthropological Survey of India was established, which was earlier part of the Zoological Survey. And in 1948, the head office was shifted to Calcutta from Banaras. Yes. So, the organization doing their research in social, cultural and biological aspects of the people of India in a holistic perspective. Yes. So, this organization kept itself abreast of the new challenges facing humanity and tune itself to reap the benefits of the emerging technologies all over for the benefit of humankind. Yes, now we'll see the regional center setup of the Anthropological Survey of India. Yes, friends, head office at Calcutta, yes. Then regional centers in throughout the country like Andaman at Andaman and Nicobar, Northeast Regional Center, Central Region Center, yes, then Southern Regional Center, Northwest Regional Center, Western Regional Center. Eastern Regional Center and Sub-Regional Regional Center at Jagdalpur. Yes. So, the Anthropological Regional Centers set up like, as we know, the head office is at Calcutta and the Regional Center of Andaman and Nicobar at Port Blair Northeast Regional Center at Shillong. So after the establishment of Anthropological Survey of India in 1951, first regional center was set up at Port Blair for the Andaman and Nicobar Regional Center. 
the North East Regional Centre was established at Shillong in 1953. Then Central Region Centre at Nagpur was established in 1955, which has also Sagarfield Station. Then Southern Regional Centre was established in Mysore 1960, which has Vezak Field Station. Then Northwest Regional Centre was established in Dehradun in 1969 with the camp office at New Delhi. Then Western Regional Centre was established in Udaipur in 1975. Then Eastern Regional Centre was established in Calcutta 1976 with the Ranchi Field Station. Yes, and then sub regional center at Jagdalpur was established in 1972. Yes, this is the setup of the Anthropological Survey of India. Yes, see the organizational chart. Yes, friends. So these are the organizational chart of anthropological anthropological survey of India. Yes. These are the various verticals of Anthropological Survey of India. There are core facilities like DNA laboratory, chlor, phenotyping laboratory, paleoanthropological laboratory, human skeletal repository, visual anthropology, cinematology, photography, audiography, digital imaging. Imagining, yes. Then there is also Central Museum. Yes, so these are the regional centers and field stations. Yes, Andaman Nicobar Regional Center at Port Blair, Northeastern Regional Center at Shillong, where field station at Manipur and field station at Arunachal Pradesh. Then, Southern Regional Center Mysore, with the field station at Andhra Pradesh and field station at Pondicherry. The Northwestern Regional Center Dehradun and the field station at Jammu and Kashmir and field station at Himachal Pradesh. And also there are Central Regional Center, Central Regional Center Nagpur with the sub regional center Jagdalpur and field station at Sagar Madhya Pradesh. Then Western Regional Centre at Udaipur, Eastern Reg Regional Centre Calcutta and Permanent Field Station at Ranchi and Camp Office in New Delhi is also Regional Centre. Yes, so this is the organizational chart of Anthropological Survey of India. Now we'll see the objective of the organization. Yes, friends. So, to study the tribes and other communities that form the population of India, both from the biological and cultural point of view. Yes, as we know, in the diversity, 
of our country we have number of tribes or tribal population spread all over the country yes to study these tribes and other communities from the yes which form the population of india and this study from the point of biological and cultural view yes this is the objective of anthropological survey of india then to study and preserve the human skeletal remains both from ancient and contemporary period yes to study and preserve the human skeletal remains both from ancient and contemporary period then to function as training center for students in anthropology to collect preserve maintain and document the biological heritage and the traditional art and craft of the people of india through anthropological museums yes so these are the objectives of the anthropological survey of india to study and research of the tribes and other communities yes to function as a training center for the students in anthropology to collect preserve maintain and document the biocultural heritage and the traditional art and craft of the people of india through anthropological museums yes so after these objectives we'll see the recent news was there in related with the sentinels yes sentinels so the sentinels are a pre neolithic Nigerian tribe who live in North Sentinel Island of the Andamans. Yes. So Sentinels are a pre-Neolithic Nigerian tribe who live in North Sentinel Island of the Andamans. They have not faced incursions. incursions and remain hostile to outsiders yes the inhabitants are connected to the jarawa on the basis of physical as well as linguistic similarities yes as we know there is one of the tribe jarawa so this tribe or the inhabitant are connected to the jarawa on the basis of physical and physical as well as linguistic similarities yes based on carbon dating of kitchen medians by the anthropological survey of india sentinels presence was confirmed in the islands to 2000 years ago so genome studies indicate that the andaman tribes could have been on the islands even 30000 years ago yes
Yes. So the based on carbon dating of kitchen middens by the Anthropological Survey of India, this sentinel's presence was confirmed in the islands too, 2000 years ago. And the genome studies indicate that the Andaman tribes could have been on the islands even 30,000 years ago. Yes, so the government of India issued the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Regulation 1956 to declare the traditional areas occupied by the tribes as reserves. So, it prohibits the entry of any person except those with authorization. Yes, photographing or filming the tribe member is also an offense and the rules were amended later to enhance penalties. Yes. So the government of India issued the Andaman Nicobar Island Protection and Aboriginal Tribes Regulation 1956 to declare the traditional areas occupied by the tribes as reserves. Yes. These are the pictures. Yes, the picture shows the tribes in Andaman. Yes. See the geographical location of North Sentinel Island. Yes. So, the tribe or they have been protected under Andaman and Nicobar Island Regulation 1956 Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes Prevention Atrocities Act 1989 Restrictions under Foreigner Restricted Area Orders 1963 Yes Visa Manual Conditions Passport Act 1920 Yes and Indian Forest Act 1927 and Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Yes, so this tribe have been protected under Andaman and Nicobar Islands Regulation 1956, Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Prevention Atrocities Act 1989, Restrictions under Foreigner August 1963 which is declared as restricted area and visa manual conditions passport act 1920 indian forest act 1927 and wildlife protection act 1972 yes yes friends do not forget to attend upsc csc prelims 2021 carnival we are conducting today from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. which will help you to boost your preparation for civil services. Yes friends, now come to the topic. So today we are studying Anthropological Survey of India and there was recent news within the context of Andaman tribe. Yes. Now, why are they said to be vulnerable? Yes. The tribe in the North Sentinel Island, why they are, 
they said to be vulnerable because it is said they have made little to no advancement in the over 60000 years and still live very primitive lives surviving mainly on fish and coconuts yes they are very vulnerable to germs since they have not had contact with the outside world even a common flu virus carried by a visitor could wipe out the entire tribe yes even a common flu virus carried by a visitor could wipe out the entire tribe since 1960s there have been a handful of handful of efforts to reach out to the tribe but all have largely failed and they have repeatedly aggressively made it clear that they want to be isolated yes there are incidents occurred in past few years where these tribes want to be live isolated or in isolation yes they are very vulnerable to germs since they have not had contact with the outside world yes now we'll see who are particularly vulnerable tribal groups pvtgs yes so the particularly vulnerable tribal groups are the marginalized section of the scheduled tribes of india and they are a section who are relatively isolated educationally and socio economically backward living in a habitat far away from amenities yes particularly vulnerable tribal groups is not a constitutional category nor these constitutionally recognized communities but it is a government of india classification created with the purpose of enabling improvement in the conditions of certain communities with particularly low development yes so basically this category not classified or not mentioned in our constitution but pvtg particularly vulnerable tribal groups classified by the government of india with the purpose of enabling improvement in the conditions of certain communities with particularly low development yes so the criteria followed for determination of pvtgs yes are under the pre agricultural level of technology a stagnant or declining population extremely low literacy a subsist subsistence level of economy yes these are the criteria followed for the determination of particularly vulnerable tribal groups pvtgs these are the marginalized section of the scheduled tribes of india and they are a section who are relatively isolated educationally socio economically backward living in a habitat far away from amenities yes so it is not a constitutional category a nor these constitutionally recognized communities but government of india classified them to a uh, created this category with the purpose of enable improvement in the conditions of certain communities with particularly low development yes
So this is the criteria for road two determination of particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Yes. Now we'll see statistical overview of particularly vulnerable tribal groups in India. Yes. So among the 75 listed PVTGs, the highest number are found in Odisha 13, followed by Andhra Pradesh 12, Bihar including Jharkhand 9, Madhya Pradesh including Chhattisgarh 7, Tamil Nadu 6, Kerala and Gujarat having 5 groups H. Yes. Five PVTGs in Kerala and five in Gujarat. Yes. So the remaining PVTGs live in West Bengal, three Maharashtra, three and two each in Karnataka and Uttarakhand and one each in Rajasthan, Tripura and Manipur. Yes. So this is the statistical overview of particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Yes, Ram Kumar in this session we are studying about anthropological survey of India. Yes. So, all the four tribal groups in Andaman and one in Nicobar Islands are recognized as PVTGs, yes, particularly vulnerable tribal groups. So, four tribal groups in Andaman and one in Nicobar Island. So, the Saharia people of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan are largest among the PVTGs with population more than 4 lakhs. So the smallest population size among PVTGs are the sent sentinels as per the last contact effort on March 2005. So group of 32 and 13 persons were sighted at different places. Yes. So the smallest population size among these particularly vulnerable tribal groups are sentinels at North Sentinel Island. Like the last effort to survey them in 2005, so the group of 32 and 13 persons were sighted at different places in that island. Yes. Now we'll see the scheme for development of PVTGs. Yes. Why we are studying that? Because Anthropological Survey of India is studying the communities and tribes and their culture in anthropological aspects. So where now we'll see the scheme for development of PVTGs. Yes, the Ministry of Tribal Affairs implements the scheme of development of particularly vulnerable tribal groups, PVTGs. So under the scheme, conservation come development. Yes, CCD. If we are talking about the Urban citizens known this abbreviation CCD, the place of enjoyment or discussions, whereas under the scheme for the PVTGs, the conservation come development CCD, annual plans are to be prepared by each state and union territory for their 
particularly vulnerable tribal groups based on their need assessment which are then appraised and approved by the project appraisal committee of the ministry then priority is also assigned to pvtgs under the schemes of a special central assistance to tribal sub schemes yes so grants under article 275 clause 1 of the constitution grants in aid to voluntary organizations working for the welfare of scheduled tribes and strengthening of education among st girls in low literacy districts yes so these are the schemes for development of particularly vulnerable tribal groups yes so in today's session anthropological survey of india we have studied like we have started the session with the recent news that is the anthropological survey of india has stated that any exploitation of the north sentinel island of the andamans for commercial and strategic gain would wipe out the tribals yes so the anthropological survey of india is the apex indian government organization involved in anthropological studies and field data research for human and cultural aspects yes so in 1945 this organization was established which earlier was a part of zoological survey and the head office was shifted to calcutta in 1948 yes so this organization to study of every cognizant interested in the indian people their culture social institutions about all their ethnic affinities yes so the ansi anthropological survey of india rose to every occasion to contribute its might though its mandate of pursuing research in socio cultural and biological aspects of the peoples of india yes which is in a holistic perspective with an emphasis on the matters of contemporary relevance and national significance yes and then we have covered the surveys regional center setup yes so regional centers at port blair shillong nagpur mysore dehradun udaipur calcutta jagdalpur and camp office at new delhi and there are field stations at manipur arunachal pradesh andhra pradesh jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh madhya pradesh and permanent field station at ranchi 
Yes, then we have covered the objective of anthropological survey of India. Yes, to study the tribes and other communities that form population of India with the context of the biological and cultural point of view to study and preserve the human skeletal remains both from ancient and contemporary period to function as a training center for students in anthropology and to collect, preserve, maintain and document the biocultural heritage and the traditional art and craft of people of India through anthropological museums yes then we have covered the information and points related with the sentinels yes the tribe sentinels So this is the pre-neolithic Negrito tribe who lived in North Sentinel Island of the Andamans. Yes, so the government of India issued Andaman and Nicobar Island protection of Aboriginal Tribes Regulation 1956. Yes. So then after that we have covered the geographical location yes under these various acts the tribes are protected like Andaman and Nicobar Island Regulation 1956 Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes Act 1989 Restrictions under foreign orders 1963, Visa Manual Conditions and Passport Act 1920, Indian Forest Act 1927, Wildlife, Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Yes, after that we have covered why this tribe, why this tribe is called to be vulnerable. So they are vulnerable to germs since they have not had contact with the outside world yes then we have covered who are PVTGs particularly vulnerable tribal groups yes so they are the tribal groups who are relatively isolated educationally and socio-economically backward living in a habitat far away from amenities then we have covered the criteria followed for determination of this PVTGs yes like pre-agricultural level of technology a stagnant or declining population extremely low literacy and a subsistence level of economy yes then we have covered statistical overview of particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Yes, so there are 75 listed PVTGs in India, whereas the highest number found in Odisha 13, Andhra Pradesh 12, Bihar and Jharkhand 9. Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh 7, Tamil Nadu 6, Kerala 5, Gujarat 5, West Bengal 3, Maharashtra 3, Karnataka 2, Uttarakhand 2, Rajasthan, Tripura and Manipur 1 in each state PVTGs. Then 
the four tribal groups in Andaman and one in Nicobar Islands. Yes, whereas we have covered the Sahariya people of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan are the largest among the PVTGs with the population more than 4 lakhs. Whereas the smallest population size among the PVTGs are sentinels. Yes. So in the recent tracing, the groups of 32 and 13 person were sighted at different places at the North Sentinel Island. Yes. Then we have covered the scheme for development of these particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Yes, conservation come development annual plans are to be prepared by each state and union territories for their particularly vulnerable tribal groups based on their need assessment. Yes, and approved by the project appraisal committee of the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Yes, priority is also assigned to these PVTGs under the schemes of Special Central Assistance SCA to Tribal Sub Scheme TSS. So these grants under Article 275 of Clause 1. Yes. So, the grants in aid to voluntary organizations working for the welfare of scheduled tribes and strengthening of education among scheduled tribe girls in low literacy districts. Yes, so that's all about the Anthropological Survey of India, then Sentinel yes then north sentinel island and the tribe vulnerable tribe then pvtgs yes so friends see you in the next lecture with a new topic till the time you can revise what we have covered in today's lecture yes do not forget to attend an academic combat which is scheduled on tomorrow 11 o'clock and yes please attend today's carnival don't miss the opportunity to boost your preparation for the CSA prelims 2021 we have carnival from 8 am to 11 pm those aspirants are planning to appear for Plains 2021 in June. So enroll yourself or unlock the free test series using referral code RBI Live. We are providing free test series for all aspirants for complete general studies and current affairs. And those aspirants are planning to join our paid courses plus or iconic they can use my referral code RBI Live to get 10% discount. Yes, friends. So please like, share, and subscribe on Academy YouTube channels and videos. Hit the bell icon for the notifications of various lectures and sessions. As we know, the UPSC has released UPSC notification for Civil Services Preliminary Examination 2021. 
those aspirants have any doubt related with this notification or form submission they can contact us through our telegram groups or they can watch videos from our top educators regarding notification you can watch our strategy videos to prepare your study plan so guys this is the crucial time for your preparation and an academy will help you throughout the journey so do not forget to enroll for our various activities to boost your preparation for civil services yes friends in the next session we'll learn new topic and do not forget to attend our special classes on an academy app enroll for these are special classes so see you in the next lecture till the time keep revising keep studying all the best take care